Well, thanks for having me. It's, it's really an honor to be here. Um, so today I get to share um, really Comcast's journey with OpenStack thus far and, and really talk about some of the successful use cases that we've had that have really accelerated our Elastic Cloud environment. And it's not all going to be a rosy kind of uh, pretty picture. Um, I'm also going to try to identify some of the areas that um, we are really currently challenged with. And you know some of the opportunities we have as a community to address some of these challenges. So you know, everybody likes to share and, and show how proud we are of our organization. Well, Comcast is actually um, a, a pretty innovative place, and, and you know this is a, from a guy coming from JPL. I I think we do some really cool stuff. But as a company, um, you know we're, we're we're not just one of the the nation's largest cable providers. Um, we also do video, high speed internet. Um, phone services, email, and our customers are, are, are residential and businesses. And um, you know, according to Wikipedia, it's a very interesting um, story with the merger of NBC Universal, how big of a company we really are. I mean, um, we've got 10 TV movie production studios, we've got Universal Pictures, we've got the theme parks, um, we've got two sports teams. And a couple of stadiums, so it's 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 a rather big company. Um, and and this is kind of our 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 path to OpenStack right now. As of today, we we have more than a petabyte of memory deployed, and more than a million vCPU cores. Um, we're, we're we're big on Ceph. We have multi petabyte Ceph uh, block and object storage, and uh, we have multi terabyte SSD arrays, um, and we're deployed across uh, 34. Uh, national data centers and re regional data centers, and you know, right now we're 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 still in the Ice House release, but we are moving directly to Mataka. And um, we really believe in OpenStack, and 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 this is kind of evidence of that is is our our contributions to the community. Um, the last time I checked Stackalytics, I mean, maybe when I was putting this together a couple nights ago, uh, we had 73,000 lines of code. Uh, over 1,100 commits, and we have core developers and reviewers on multiple projects. Um, and since Vancouver, uh, the Kilo cycle, uh, we've increased our contributions by 50%. So we're, we're really proud of that. Uh, we really believe in OpenStack, and I think this is a good evidence of that. So um, I want to call out Mark Mule, who really was the visionary behind the, the, the plan for building this kind of multi-tenant platform for all of our critical services. And he's in the audience, and, and uh, he really should be giving this talk, but that's OK. I'm, uh, I was voluntold. Uh, so the goals are really to uh, reduce overall cost, you know, consolidate infrastructure efforts, and um, reduce duplication. I think in big enterprises, duplication is, is, a, is a real challenge we have to overcome. And, and, and for some of our major workloads, OpenStack really, really has delivered. I'm going to cover each of them in a little bit of detail. Um, we're really proud of our X1 um, platform. It, it, it's really the, the entertainment operating system behind our services. And if you have Xfinity, I don't. Uh, during the Olympics, uh, I, what I understand is a, is a really, really, really cool experience where every event, every sport, every metal uh, ceremony, all of that could be accessed through one single interface, right? And it does, um, it has a voice activated remote, all things I want to experience, but I live in LA, so. Um, and, you know, the other cool kind of thing is that we have this cloud DVR capability, which is, uh, which, which lets you take your recordings everywhere, right? And that's kind of useful when you're flying back and forth uh, across the country. Um, so another major use case, or a couple of use cases for us, is our residential email service runs directly on our Elastic Cloud. And we have tens of millions of users and, and terabytes of data. Um, and we also do a lot of product development, you know, application development. We have hundreds and hundreds of applications. And it's really Elastic Cloud, our Elastic Cloud environment has become a, a critical part of, of many CI CD pipelines. Um, and you know, like everyone else who ad adopts OpenStack and has a cloud-oriented architecture, it really accelerates innovation. And, and you know, at, at NASA, we 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 have this concept of fast failures, and cloud really really uh, enables that. 
And we've already started doing some container orchestration. I'm not going to get into that in detail, but um, we, we've also contributed to Kubernetes, and we have some open source um, um, projects that are, that, are, that are being contributed to Kubernetes today. Um, we also run big data on Elastic Cloud, and, and um, um, Chris Power, who's also in the audience, um, was, was key in de de delivering Hadoop um, on our OpenStack environment while using Swift and Swift FS as the back end. Um, and, and it's these kinds of um, workloads that are really challenging how we scale and how we operate OpenStack, right? So here kind of is a high level um, couple of bullets that, that talk about really these high level challenges and we'll get into detail on, on what they are. Um, the first is converging our infrastructure to meet the demands of modern workloads. Um, and, and, and the next one is uh, we really need to increase our operational efficiency. And, and lastly, performance and scalability in OpenStack have, has really shown it to be a problem. So let's talk about converging our infrastructure, uh, specifically in storage. Right? So modern storage requirements demand provisioned IOPS, high read and write throughput, quality of service for, for noisy neighbor issues. And at some point, we're going to have to address persistent uh, container storage in OpenStack. Um, but all of these requirements add a ton of complexity. So we have the noisy neighbor problem, right? And we don't have really optimal ways of identifying inside of OpenStack what neighbor is causing issues, right? We don't have the instrumentation. A lot of the telemetry isn't there today. And then organizations our size have to think about convergence versus disaggregation. Do we want a hyper-converged uh, infrastructure node, compute node, or do we want to disaggregate the storage uh, all over the place? Um, and I talked a little bit about in, uh, instrumentation, but operational awareness, monitoring, notification, these are all problems that Comcast has had today. And you know, uh, cost is kind of a big issue, right? Um, it's interesting, but um, a lot of, you know, as a service provider, we're often compared to other service providers like Amazon. So we always get, you know, our application developers will, will bring, you know, the Amazon price sheet and say, hey, look, I can get SSD volumes from Amazon at, you know, 10 cents a gig per month, right? And, you know, we don't have, even as big as Comcast is, we don't have the, the, the volume uh, or the potential discounts that, that Amazon can get based on their volume. So it's, it's always this kind of negotiation, right? So the next kind of workload that I think um, HP talked about a little bit earlier are, 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 are you know, telco providers delivering NFE. And virtual net network functions have really, really complex requirements, right? High bandwidth, IO, really low latency, right? Predictable and consistent CPU performance, right? And, and, and a really high availability and resiliency as we're delivering these services to the edge. But, you know, in order to consolidate, in order to reduce duplication, we, we need to have multi-tenancy for these workloads as well, right? So that's, that's a really, really complex problem to have. And it introduces so much operational complexity to a level that we, we, we are not, we, we're, we're trying to address, but we're still trying to mature, right? And there's a ton of vendor reliance today in, in SDNs, right? Um, and the orchestration tools on top of the VNFs, right? And to that extent, a lot more cost. So we're trying to drive, drive down the overall um, cost of OpenStack, but we keep introducing these new you know, vendors and, and, and various software licenses. So the other challenge is you know, just increasing operational f efficiency. So ideally, we would want a really clear and concise reference architecture, right? So companies like Comcast and Walmart and, and HP, um, we're, we're kind of the large enterprises that help the smaller enterprises validate OpenStack, yet we don't have a consistent reference architecture between us, right? So ideally, that would be nice. Um, an automated and repeatable deployment model, there's, there's probably, I don't know, I lost count of how many different ways we can deploy OpenStack, right? Um, we contribute to OSA at Com Comcast as OpenStack Ansible, 
But you know, there's a lot of work in, in, in now containerizing you know, via, via Kubernetes. There's still you know, triple O that Red Hat supports. So there's just so many different ways of doing it. Um, we need a consistent upgrade path. And obviously, we're an ice house. So that's a big problem for us. And um, backwards compatibility for APIs and various things like that. And, and again, with the operational visibility, we need better visibility into the stack to understand issues and make better decisions. You know, but all these things introduce even more challenges. You know, I, I talked about the multiple deployment methodologies, unsupported APIs, and, and instrumentation and monitoring. Um, you know, we, we, we have a, a big scale problem at Comcast as well. Um, I think a, a lot of the big operators know that at a couple of hundred nodes or so, things in OpenStax control plane kind of start acting a little bit wonky. And um, you know, message queuing problems, database problems. We, we've seen year over year increase in demand. And, and we continue to grow as far as our data acquisition and retention. So there's some things that are really testing the limit of what um, we're seeing OpenStack into today. And there's a lot of work around benefiting that as well. Um, so it's not all negative. So how are we going to address these challenges? Well, I think to start, we need to collaborate with other large scale operators, right? So I, I get the feeling that we have the same technical debt, right? The, the same problems as far as instrumentation and monitoring and, and um, those kind of issues. So, so if we can collaborate, we can get together and we can work together on, on, on solving these problems, uh, I think that's a good start. And we're going to continue contributing to the community uh, because we know the value of that. And we know that you know, a lot of the community looks to, to us to validate OpenStack for a large enterprise. Um, and for now, we're going to have to embrace a chaotic environment. So you know, hyperconvergence or convergence versus disaggregation. Are we going to have you know, very capable compute nodes? Are we going to have you know, SSD arrays? Are we going to have hybrid arrays? The answer is probably yes for now. As we reduce our operational complexity, right, then maybe we can start you know, funneling all of those things into a, a, a smaller selection of, of vendors and, and capabilities. But I think for now, it, it, it has to be a bit chaotic. All right. And um, so thank you. Um, I'm here for a couple of days. Um, reach out to me. Our, our team from Comcast is here. There's a lot of us here. Um, we like sharing. We like talking to people. And uh, I really appreciate it. And I think I made up some time. <laughs>